Hello and welcome, I am Keen's Degree, and this is part 2 of my Duelist Gameplay Guide series. If you have not yet seen part 1, go ahead and check that out first. Today, we are going to be taking a closer look at specific terms like Frenzy and Airdrop. This will also include faction specific terms like Abyssian Shadow Creep and subclassified minions like Arcanist. So I'm just going to go down this list stating what each term is, what it does, and why it matters or why you should use it. Once again, huge props to Ash with this fantastic forum post, which he collected and conveniently condensed a lot of the information for which I am about to present, so thank you. Nearby. Nearby refers to anything within one square of the square in question. For example, in Tropic Decay, the Vetruvian Hard Removal spell destroys a nearby minion. It's a powerful spell, but the drawback is that you have to be right next to it to use it. Also, any minion summoned or placed must be nearby another unit or general with few exceptions. Around. Pretty much the same as nearby. Notably, this does not include the space underneath the unit. Token. Typically a unit not placed through your action bar. This includes certain Abyssian Wraithlings, Vitruvian Dervishes, and the Yeager Mechazor. These tokens do not go into the discard pile. Otherwise, token doesn't really mean a whole lot. Ability. This refers to any effect text on a unit card. So, for example, Windblade Adept has the ability of Zeal, gain plus two attack when near your general. Most units who have an ability sacrifice stats to compensate, so keep that in mind when playing versus someone with Dispel. Strike Back, or Counter Attack. Simply, most units in most situations will return attack on the attacker even if it dies in the engagement. Notable exceptions are ranged units. Range. This ability means you can attack with this unit at any other enemy unit on the board without fear of a counterattack. As always, we have exceptions. Notably, there are some units that make you attack it instead, most of which have to be near you anyway. Other ranged units can also counterattack you. Frenzy. Attack every nearby square. Friendly units excluded. You will only receive a counterattack from the unit you attack. This ability is extremely effective against an enemy playing a lot of minions. Flying. Simply put, you will be able to move to any square on the map, assuming it's not already occupied. The cool feature is that there doesn't need to be a clear path. In other words, let's assume your enemy blocked themselves off with units but left one open space right next to him. Instead of butchering every unit in your way, you can simply fly over there, assuming of course you're not provoked. Airdrop. Similar to flying, you can place this unit anywhere on the map, effectively breaking the place a unit nearby another friendly unit rule. A nifty ability for getting past defenses. Rush. A unit with rush can move and attack the turn it was placed. Being a player turn by player turn game, Rush is one of the most valuable abilities as your opponent doesn't get to react to it first. As such, however, Rush is fairly limited and typically quite expensive. Don't use Rush as a simple board clear. Save it as a finisher or for swinging tempo drastically. Provoke. Not only does Provoke root, meaning unable to move, any enemy unit nearby it must also attack it first. Provoke does well to force your opponent to play your game and you can limit their options with it. Celerity. With Celerity, you can move and attack twice. The previous rule set of you must move first then attack applies. For example, move attack, move attack is a common way to use it. However, if you attack first before moving, that counts as your first action, so then you can only move and attack once more. Opening Gamut. When a unit is summoned, it will have the additional effect go off. An opening gamut can be something like spawn units around the board. Opening Gamut can be really nice because it can be like a spell and a unit combined. But if the spell effect is not one that is helpful or one that you want, the resulting unit it will actually be less mana and space efficient. Dying Wish. Converse to opening gambit, Dying Wish has an effect when the unit is removed from the board. It can be something like spawn a unit in the same place. Notably, dispelling or transforming a unit will remove the Dying Wish effect. Dying Wish carries inherent risk, but is typically more powerful than opening gambit. Exhausted. Essentially, this unit's turn is over until next turn. Dispel. Remove a unit's ability, Dying Wish, and an effect included, or a tile on the board like Shadow Creep. Dispel is incredibly handy in dealing with units with powerful effects like Flying, Backstab, Zeal, and or Provoke. Every deck should have some form of Dispel. Stun. The target unit cannot move until the end of your next turn. Transform. Turns a unit into another unit, removing all abilities from the previous minion. This is like a more thorough form of Dispel. That is pretty much all the commonly seen items, let's move on to faction specific. Zeal. Unique to Lynar, Zeal gives a bonus to any minion near your general. Buffs like increased attack or even drawing cards. 
Zeal pretty much makes Lionar a general who constantly has his units right next to him, but as such, immobility can be a problem. A common tactic is to constantly stay on top of the enemy general and never giving them a chance to run away. A common counter is to dispel or displace the Zeal minions, effectively making the remaining unit much less useful. Backstab Similar to Zeal, Backstab gives a solid theme to Songhai. The theme is wanting to get directly, and by directly I mean the direct one square behind a unit, for increased damage and not allowing the attacked unit to counterattack. This is incredibly powerful for dealing large amounts of damage for free. Blast, unique to Vetruvian, but not so amazing or common like Zeal or Backstab. Blast allows you to attack every unit in a line, even at range. Only the unit directly next to you as you blast will be able to counterattack. Blast has a limited usefulness, especially considering most players will probably just stagger their units, but can still be extremely powerful in certain situations. Notably, this is not range. You can only attack in a line in the four cardinal directions. You can still attack diagonally, but it will not be a blast. Emphirial, basically a token unit that goes away at the end of the turn. Dispelling this unit will kill it and will trigger Death Watch. However, if it dies on its own at the end of a turn, Death Watch will not trigger. Shadow Creep is a tile based effect that will damage all enemy units standing on top of it, equal to the number of tiles with Shadow Creep. In other words, if you have two units standing on top of Shadow Creep and there are six tiles of Shadow Creep on the board, then those two units will take six damage each at the end of the turn. This is great for high amounts of damage over a wide area. Notably, it can be dispelled, rendering the tile back to normal. Grow. At the end of your turn, Grow will increase the stats of whatever minions have it. For example, a unit with Grow plus 2 plus 2 will gain plus 2 attack and plus 2 health at the end of your turn. Most units start off pretty weak, but become increasingly strong over time. So to counter that, you gotta destroy them real fast. Rebirth. When a unit with Rebirth dies, it becomes a 0-1 egg. If not destroyed, it will respawn the same unit at the end of your next turn. Rebirth minions are extremely sticky, but typically take a hit on stats to compensate. Infiltrate. Venar's minions with Infiltrate will gain bonuses when on the enemy side of the field, but not including the middle spaces. To cap off the terminology guide, we'll take a quick look at tribes for minion subclass. Essentially, these minions also have a second classification that bestow extra bonuses in the right situations. Arcanists. These minions promote spell usage like granting reduced spell cost. Golems. High health units typically without abilities. Mechs. Every mech summoned will contribute 20% towards getting a powerful token unit. Dervishes. Vetruvian units which can be specifically buffed by other units. Vespers. Can grant other units buffs simply by being summoned. Whew, going through all those turns is certainly a bit exhausting, but I hope I have presented it in a much more easy to use and entertaining format. This has been the Duelist Gameplay Guide Part 2. Make sure to check out Part 1 and look forward to Part 3 where I'll be going into common strategies. Thanks for watching.